Ask My Instructor 8.2.45. This is a problem that needs a really good idea. We're at first we're a little bit flummoxed with the problem. And uh, we may come up with some bad ideas before we come up with our good idea. But we did eventually find a good idea in this case. Focus in on the 1 minus 2x. Have you seen that somewhere before in a formula? How about the power reducing formula? So 1 minus 2x is part of a power reducing formula. Well, so what? Well, let's just follow our nose. Take the power reducing formula, multiply both sides by 2, and raise both sides to the 3 halves power. So we have sine squared to the 3 halves power. Is that the same as sine to the 3 power? Well, it kind of depends. It depends on what x is. We are integrating from 0 to pi. For those values of x, we know that sine is positive or 0. So sine squared to the 1 half, um, that will be the absolute value of sine. But since we know that sine is positive, the absolute value of sine is just sine. That's great, because now our sine squared x to the 3 halves power can be rewritten as just sine to the 3 of x. And that tells us that our 2 sine squared x to the 3 halves power is 2 to the 3 halves power times sine to the 3. So yes, we can simplify this further since this expression is equivalent to 2 to the 3 halves times sine of 3 to the x. And so we make that substitution. Alright, so instead of the integral of 1 minus cosine 2x to the 3 halves, we're now doing the integral of 2 to the 3 halves sine to the 3. Well, I brought the 2 to the 3 halves, I brought that to the outside, and I rewrote it as 2 radical 2. For an integrand of sine to the 3x, we use the Pythagorean trig identity to reframe the integral into a simpler problem. So there's our Pythagorean identity that we're going to use. And let's just look at the expression. Instead of uh, sine to the 3, I'll have sine squared sine. And instead of sine squared, I'll have 1 minus cosine squared. And then distribute that sine x into the parentheses. Uh, again, if you've seen my videos before, you know that um, I'm not, you don't have to do things my way. You might want to leave that sine x out. Uh, it's really up to you, however you want to handle it. For some reason, when I did this problem, I wanted to uh, bring the sine x in and break it up into two integrals, but you certainly don't have to do it that way. That's just the way I wanted to do it. All right, so we have reframed the problem, and as I said, I broke it up into two integrals. Certainly don't need to do it that way, um, but I did. And both of these integrals are pretty straightforward. Uh, the first one, let's go ahead and evaluate that. Antiderivative sine is negative cosine. And then when I have a negative like that, I like to do a little trick where um, I use that the negative uh, uh, going from 0 to pi is the positive going from pi to 0. Just uh, an identity that I find very useful in getting rid of negatives. Then I go ahead and evaluate. 
So for the first integral, I get uh, 4 radical 2. And now for the second, let u be cosine x. du is equal to negative sine x dx. I'm doing a, a formal substitution here. You don't need to do it uh, formally, but if you do, here's what it would look like. Doing a formal substitution means that I'm going to change my bounds. Now if u equals cosine x, then pi, the upper bound, will become cosine of pi. And 0, the lower bound, will become cosine of 0. Okay, so u equals cosine x, and so uh, negative, so du would be negative sine x dx. Then I brought the negative out to the front. That's how I got negative du equals sine x. Then I changed my bounds, and I'm ready to integrate. Cosine of pi is negative 1, cosine of 0 is 1. Let's do uh, that switch again. And I can, I'm ready to evaluate now. And I get 4 radical 2 over 3. And so my second integral is 4 radical 2 over 3. Putting the two pieces together, I get 8 radical 2 over 3. Take care. Have a great day.